What's good, y'all? This is Tony from How's the King. Um, I just felt led to share some of my thoughts following the release of our response to Ruslan and kind of explain the thinking behind it. And also um, in, re in response to some of the comments we've been getting regarding the song. Um, so let me start out real quick by saying uh, that I, I did to some degree count the cost before releasing this song. We've been through this kind of situation before, which I'll explain in a minute but um let me say that that if if i offended anyone um and turned anyone off to this movement and this genre uh, which god has used mightily for his glory um i you know i that was not the goal uh, words like you know man i'm done with chh or man i looked up to to hazakim and and you know this is shameful um that wasn't our goal so i know i was heavy-handed and in, in some of the ways I delivered my track, some of the things I said definitely were heavy handed and were probably painful. But let me explain why I did it and how the situation, I believe, can be rectified and how we can move forward. So um, there were some people online who, who seemed to feel like Ruslan's response to Shy was was tempered and, and even handed. Um, Rapzilla, for example, who I have much respect for. They've shown Hazakim a lot of love throughout the years. They posted his his response ours seemed to get a little bit of a different reaction from a lot of people and i understand there was no constructive criticism really offered in our track it was really just to to check the brother um and and some people were arguing though it seems like they were arguing that that ruslan's song wasn't really a diss track and that we were just plain wrong so the question is was ruslan disrespectful that's the first thing i want to ask did he cross the line so let's just look at a couple of lines. Let's look at a couple of lines, a few lines, I should say, from, from his track. And these are quotes. He said, you sound silly. Take proper precaution or I will slay you really. That was one line. He said, you sound like the mad theological nerd rapper. So right here you have him basically belittling Shy's intelligence, saying you sound silly and that I will slay you, saying I'm gonna, I'll destroy you. I will shame you. I will publicly humiliate you. Um, the theological nerd rapper, again, downplaying the, 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 the legacy of this brother, downplaying the, um, the importance of, of what this brother's contributed to this movement. And then another quote, your cash flow that low, so you turn into a savage. That's the real meaning behind false prophets. Here he seems to be suggesting that Shai Lin, who had some legitimate concerns, did this for money. Um, and when he said that's the real meaning behind false prophets, I don't know if he means either shy as being the false prophet seeking money or maybe shy released the song for money the false prophet song for money and here's another at the end he said hopefully this is the free promo you were seeking or maybe it will teach you to watch how you were speaking so again saying shy lin did this for attention he needed some free promo he's irrelevant he needed promo so like honestly when i heard this song it was the same response i had in my reaction with ruslan on, on instagram my initial response i know he's got fans but my initial response is, who, is who, would, who does this brother think he is? Like, you don't have to agree with us. You don't have to agree with Shy. You know, but you can, you can be respectful in, in disagreeing. And I know people are going to say, but you weren't respectful. And I'll get to that in a minute. Right now, I'm dealing with the initial conditions that, that created this track that Hazakim uh, uh, put out. We both agreed to put it out. It was, it was, of course, me on the track, but we agreed to put it out. So my initial response and my initial thoughts were who does this dude think he is once again just like in my interaction with him um which is a whole nother story um so there's a little bit of history uh he he came at shy not just disagreeing not just saying hey brother here's some constructive criticism no no he came at shy the way he came at us with a condescending tone sarcasm and arrogance and the thing about it was that Ruslan's response was couched in language that made it seem constructive. And after he got some 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 backlash, he kind of explained it away in those terms. But I mean, come on, I, I will slay you, really? You're the theological nerd rapper. Your cash flow that low, so you turn into a savage. And a lot of y'all who, who came at us and rebuked us had nothing to say or shared, shared this, this garbage that's not bringing unity and also very disrespectful. So, and, and one other thing I have to say is that Ruslan seemed to allude to the idea that Shai was not seeking a generation, just kind of judging a generation. Brother, and those who agree with that statement, um, Shai's song was kind of directed at reach, 
Most of those brothers are in their 30s, and some of them are in their 40s or are darn near 40 years old. So, so that idea is just, we, I just wanted to squash that right now. That, that statement makes no sense. This is an issue, this is an issue of difference on methodology and what's best for the movement. Best for a movement, by the way, that Shylin has paid his dues in. Now, concerning the issue of age, um, I do think we have a problem in Western culture in respecting manhood and particularly respecting men who, who have age behind them and who have wisdom and experience behind them. Um, it's devalued, it's been devalued. And I think particularly in urban and hip hop culture, it's been popularized to diss, quote unquote, the old dude, the old bitter dude. And a lot of this, I think, stems from the fact that um, in urban and hip hop culture, unfortunately, statistically speaking, there's a lack of fathers growing up. So where traditionally men would be seen as the wise, gatekeepers and those who pass on knowledge and wisdom there's been this sort of downplaying and almost feminine approach to men well we don't need men you know and you're washed up that that kind of talk but it seems like he was downplaying shy's shy's uh, experience disrespecting his age kind of in a, in a nutshell telling shy look i'll check you i will sun you and you're an old bitter rapper for those of y'all who don't know shy len helped to define CHH as we know it today. CHH, and by the way, let me just say this about Hazakim real quick, because some of y'all, some of y'all don't know. MCs act like they don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we we've been following and supporting this. I mean, since we were little kids. Um, I mean, going back to Stephen Wiley, D Boy, Idol King, SFC, Dynamic Twins. Later, those brothers came out. LPG. We we watched all the phases, and so so we're not coming out of nowhere offering our critique or, or feeling like the need to sort of sort of defend uh these some the legends within our movement or or defend chh we've we've watched the evolution of it one of the things that that we can say one of the things that came out of philly starting with cross movement and then with brothers like shy and tim brindle and others is that a lot of the errors that existed in this movement prior through some of the other brothers who we loved and respected and were fans of the Philly movement helped to correct and to readjust the focus where it should have been, where it needed to be. So, and Shy was a big part of that. So for, for him to be completely disrespected in his resume, and it's not about glorifying man, let's be real, but there's honor and respect due to pioneers, right? There's honor and respect due to men who have, who have dedicated their lives to the gospel. There's honor and respect due. You don't have to like it, but he has classics this brother has given us classics that will be discussed 20, 30 years from now. And they're not gonna be like a lot of stuff that's hot now. Oh yeah, I remember that song. You know, you play some of this stuff 10, 15 years and it was hot and it was fun and it was trending, but it's not gonna be considered like a classic. Shy has classics, Solus Christus, stories, the atonement, not just classics musically, but theological classics. These things will be quoted by theologians 20 years from now. To hear him disrespected the way he was, and, and you heard the quotes that I gave you earlier. I can't even lie, my only ob objective, and, and when I talked it over with Mike, the other half of Hazakim, our only objective, there was nothing really spiritual, I'm not gonna lie, no spiritual motives behind it. And that's why, if you notice, I didn't, I didn't drag a bunch of, uh, of scripture and stuff into it because I don't need, I don't, I'm not going to try to uh, mask my motive in some sort of constructive criticism and critique or, or unity. That wasn't my goal. And I don't think that was Ruslan's goal. Ruslan sort of couched his insults in that, but let's, we could all read through it, those of us who were being honest. So I, I didn't feel a need to do that. I was just real with him. And my only objective was to check him and remind him, and some of the things I said I know were heavy-handed. Um, talking about lack of classics and, and, uh, and, and unoriginality. But my point is that, that Shy Lin, you can't go anywhere else and get what Shy has offered this movement. You can't go anywhere else and, and get what, what uh, Fanatic and a lot of these brothers have offered to this movement. And Timothy Brendel, not just theologically, but sonically. And we have been loud, outspoken brothers, and a lot of cats don't want to hear it. We're like a pebble in the shoe. We annoy cats. But we've been loud and outspoken about not just, you know, lack of gospel. We also, from an artistic standpoint, believe in integrity and originality. 
and and some of this stuff this is run of the mill man it's it's like we're always taking cues from the secular world we're always waiting for them to move and then we copy their swag we copy their style and i mean i guess it sells it definitely is a good business move because you know youth groups are always looking for alternatives to what's popular but you know when it comes to uh, the test of time and when it comes to musical integrity we've always been out outspoken about that and shy has never been a biter shy is completely original uh and for so so a lot of what i was saying was just look man you know this is a brother who you should respect and this is a brother whose legacy is going to outlast the test of time um i don't know if i can say the same for you and whether or not it was right or wrong the way I said it. And honestly, I think I would probably reword some things. I would still put out the track, but I would reword some things and make it a little less personal. But uh, my motive was nothing more than to check Ruslan and let him know, you know, and, and to remind him, come on now, bro. You know, you're not going to sun anyone. Um, and uh, so so I just wanted to say that. And let me also say in terms of Hazakim, we've we've taken this kind of heat before. Um and sometimes thanklessly we've taken heat um some of y'all remember the whole thing with g craig lewis and g craig lewis you know a few years back over 10 years ago uh, came out with some dvds about hip-hop and he started dragging brothers in the lord like shy and ambassador and even us we were on a list he had this list of uh, of people that he didn't want churches to support and i think it was just a list he copied and pasted from like a christian database christian hip-hop database um, and he was all the talk. He was all the rage on the CHH message boards. And, and, and we came out with a track addressing it after we reached out to G. Craig. And he refused to admit his error, not just his error on how he treated brothers, but also some of the historical claims he was making about the origins of, of hip hop. Even though, again, he had a lot of solid arguments, but it was all the extra stuff that really delegitimized his, his platform. So we reached out to him and we got a very rude response, something like get a life. That was the email we got in response. So we released a track and we took a lot. We released a song to G Craig. We got a lot of heat. But guess what? After that song was released, you didn't hear about him in CHH circles anymore. It was done. I'm not tooting my horn. We're not tooting how's Akeem's horn. But but our song had a lot to do with that. And brothers, brothers don't recognize at the end of the day, man, you know, I, I I really don't care uh, about recognition. I'm just saying we've been through this before and we've taken hits for other brothers and it's never been for ourselves. It's always been uh, to defend something that we believe the Lord has used for his glory. Ruslan tried to son Shai Lin and that's a, a brother that we that we admire and respect and we don't agree with him on everything. We've had our, our differences on Twitter uh, over politics and you know and, and, and world view on certain things but when it comes to the gospel and that brother's resume i tip my hat to him and uh, and and another thing too you know there's been a lot of really like dis dis responses in social media and on youtube to our song and that's fine you know people have their 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 biases and their fans of certain artists and when when, when any disagreement occurs, they're always gonna take the side of, of, of the artists they love. Um, but let me just say that some of the disses we've read, I'm not talking about the, the hurt that some people have expressed. I'm talking about some of the disses we've read. You know, it's funny, um, Shy Lin addressed a situation which I think he had every right to address and he's earned the right to address. Uh, Ruslan, who had nothing to do with it, took it, well, I don't think he took it personal. He saw it as an opportunity. So he then dissed Shy Lin. We dissed Ruslan, and now brothers are coming out rebuking us for dissing Ruslan by dissing Hazakim. The only difference is they're not putting it over a track. They're not putting it over music. So I hope that that that, that pretty soon, you know, and myself included, we can all kind of take a, a step back and reevaluate everything, and, uh, and and just and just kind of pick up the pieces. So. I, in, 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 in a nutshell, look, when G. Craig Lewis was attacking this movement, he did it publicly, right? We reached out to the brother. He rejected our, our olive branch. We went at him. We were not thanked for it. We were hated for it. We were misunderstood. Our motives were questioned. But you don't hear about G. Craig Lewis anymore. He's not the talk. It is what it is. And in similar manner, when Ruslan decided to diss Shai Lin, he did it publicly. And it was more than an attack on Shai Lin. It was an attack on the movement. Because it wasn't just an attack 
on Shai's character and personality and motive. It was also an attempt to, again, redefine this movement from its focus and from its mission from a guy who doesn't even identify as a, as a Christian MC. At the, at the end of the day, our response to Ruslan was nothing more than a lesson in respect. We were checking the brother for trying to sun shy in a very condescending, sarcastic, and disrespectful way. And for attempting from the outside to redefine a movement that Shy has labored in, we have labored in. You have no right to do that. So we're willing to take our song down when Ruslan takes his song down. Because even though he, after receiving backlash, tried to backpedal on some of what he said or explain it away as not, it was just like irony. And I'm using hyperbole and irony to make a point. No, bro, you, you dissed Shy. And you're obviously proud of the track, so you kept it on your SoundCloud. So, Hazakim, we will take our song down when Ruslan decides to take his song down. And that's that. That's the deal. Um, and I, having said that, let me just say this real quick concerning the whole issue with CHH. Shylin merely spoke what so many of us have been thinking for a long time. You know, there was a, where was a time, there was a time in this movement when I, I encountered believers, even pastors and elders and congregations who took issue with um, or, or had reservations about supporting and getting behind this movement. And they had every right, I think, to be skeptical, right, of something novel. And, and some, of their, some of their fears, unfortunately, have been realized. Um, but when I would give them a Shia Lin album or a Hazakim album, Theophanies, or a Cross Movement album, uh, and, you know, there were, there were projects I could give them. Timothy Brindle, right? Jay Sun, Flame, and other brothers. But I remember giving, referring these guys, these pastors and these believers to these projects. And the response was, wow, there is more theological richness. There is more soundness. There is more teaching, more nuggets of truth in this one song than I hear in an entire year of sermons at some churches. That was the glory of this movement. It was edifying God's people and teaching them about their savior. That is why we fight for it because it's more than music. Okay. It's more than music. There's a legacy. And, 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 and when we had brothers and sisters edified in their faith and we had brothers and sisters challenged in their faith and we saw God being glorified in this movement to see what's become of it, we have every right. We have every right to speak up and we're not going to answer to anyone for why we feel the way we feel. And, and so, and as far as the reach thing, let me just, let me just put this out there. I have had a few interactions with, with Lecrae and I will say he was one of the most pleasant people and one of the most accommodating and complimentary people I've ever met. Um, he shared with me how he had been in touch with Lupe Fiasco and, in trying to share the gospel with Lupe, who's a Muslim, he referred him to one of our songs to explain atonement. And he, the, the reason he did that, the reason he shared that with me, I could tell was to encourage us. So I don't, I don't ha like, I, 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 I won't forget that. And I respect the brother. And, um, even though our artistically, you know, I had my, I had my, I have my preferences and he knows that, um, and artistically he may have his preferences. I respect, I respect the, his heart to, to be kind and cordial. And I respect his business savvy and what he's been able to accomplish. But I must say this, maybe unintentionally, the brother did monopolize CHH. He became the face of it and he's a good businessman. He's great at marketing and he created a phenomenon. And again, he, he monopolized CHH um, and it's, it's been, it's done well for him. And this movement helped to get him where he's at. And again, it's, it's done well for him, not just in terms of popularity, but also monetarily. The brother has reaped benefits from this movement. So some of the consequences of, of, of that may not have been in, intentional, um, but in monopolizing the movement and becoming the face of the movement, I mean, when I say monopolizing it, what I mean is there was a time when you could go to any concert that wasn't a reach concert and it would be darn near empty. These were artists who were bringing it lyrically, had tight music, and you could go to their concert and maybe find 30, 40, 50 people, maybe 100, right? Um, 
people didn't even want to drive five miles to support these brothers. But if Reach was in a, a state away, brothers would drive hours away. So, I mean, they became really the face of the movement. Um, and, and as a result of that, I think the abandonment of the movement to some degree has left it hemorrhaging because in the process of monopolizing it, once, once the sort of face of Christian hip hop became Lecrae and he starts turning the, the shifting, the focus of, of this mission of the mission of the movement from less theology and, and edification and and grounding brothers and sisters in their faith and glorifying God to more social justice and self uh, reflection music, which again, there's nothing wrong with that at, at its face. But I'm saying in light of having the keys to CHH in your hands to shift the focus of this genre um, to something new and change the environment, change the taste buds of the fans. And then on top of that, to recommend and big up secular artists. So over time, I mean, a lot of fans of this movement started saying, well, heck, why do I listen to any of you guys now? Um, I can go ahead and just listen to a secular artist because you guys are bigging them up. And then and then the, on the reverse, with the shift in focus, I've got, I can't tell you how many messages I've gotten, conversations where people are telling me, yo, I was done with CHH back in 2012 or 13 when the, when the focus seem to shift so um and 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 from my standpoint chh is bigger than any one person hazakim doesn't believe in, in in having like you know sacred cows um and even our defensive shylin wasn't because he's a sacred cow it's because the dude who said it had no right to say it the way he said it it was just an issue of respect but you can disagree with shy you can disagree with us you can disagree with Lamp Mode. You can disagree with Lecrae. So this idea that like some brothers are untouchable and you can't disagree with them, I have to take issue with that. Just do it respectfully. But my point is that we don't believe any one person is bigger than the movement. But one person was crowned by the churches, the youth groups, the event coordinators, right? The radio stations, the, the, the vloggers as the face of CHH. And even though this person eventually said, I'm not a CHH artist when it was convenient and when it was, was used in, even in the secular realm to, to set them apart from other rappers, they didn't mind wearing the, the moniker. And that, that's the problem. But uh, in the midst of this phenomenon, this trend, which really became kind of a fad, you had a shift in focus in CHH and the, and the, the taste buds of the, of, the, of the supporters were either, either turned off to this new focus or they started going to secular rappers because Christian hip hop had become secular rap, clean, conscious, secular rap. So the movement was left hemorrhaging and this isn't personal, but there's been a shift. There has been a shift in this movement away from the glory of God onto the, the like self-focused and, 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 and from a business standpoint, it's, it, it's smart because let's be honest, most people, do they want to hear about the attributes of attributes of God or do they want to hear you can't stop me and anthem about how unstoppable they are? Do they want to hear, um, you know, a, about sin and atonement or would they much rather hear about personal struggle and how they have so many haters? And, and so I, I will say this in Ruslan's defense, when he said something about seeking a generation or and, and reaching a generation, some of this stuff that's become popular, and it is smart from a business point to be pragmatic and give people what they actually want, but some of what's become popular in, in Christian music and in CHH could only be popular in this generation because this is the selfie generation. This is the generation that, that it loves themselves. This is the generation that gets more turned on and more excited about hashtag and their own self and overcoming haters than they do uh, the, 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 the crucified and risen Messiah. So, so it is kind of generational. And when I say generation, I don't just mean millennials. I mean this generation. We have a generation very focused on self. So this is a trend we see that has occurred now in CHH. And again, the, as Shai said, throwing the body under the bus over time when you find yourself in the hot seat and, oh, Christian hip hop is corny. You're like the only one that's doing it right. Translation, Jesus is corny. The gospel is corny. And you're, you're not doing that. You're not shoving that down our throats. And, you know, 
in a situation where you're reaping the benefits of monopolizing it, I might be tempted to do the same thing. So, you know, God's grace on me, guys, has been so amazing. You know, the times I've been a coward, the times I've sinned against him, the times I betrayed him, the times I betrayed people around me and, and continue to do so. I don't say this in hatred or in condemnation, but it is what it is. Um, there was a, a monopolizing of the movement and also a distancing itself from the movement after the movement is what got you there in the first place. And some of it may not have been intentional and some of it, I'm sure brothers would admit, were moments of, yo, I was on the hot seat being asked a theological question about a hot topic that will get you not invited back. For example, the gay issue. If I answer it biblically, I will not be invited back. And a lot of us would love to say, oh, we would, you know, we would stand for truth. And I hope we would. But it is, uh, you know, Peter loved the Lord and, and denied him three times. So it, it, it can be a tough situation to find yourself in. Um, but let's not pretend that it didn't happen. And let's not pretend that the movement has not been affected. And regardless of our weaknesses, we live in an environment where the world, where the secular world, the unbelieving world is blatantly anti-Messiah, blatantly anti-Scripture. So we don't need our movement represented by um, trepidation, fear of offending, um, looking for opportunities to advance our careers over advancing the gospel. We really need some reckless abandon. And I think that's what Cross Movement did and why so many people were, were kind of turned on to what they were doing is that there was a reckless abandon for the gospel. And in this era, I mean, take a look, guys, take a look at what mainstream rappers and artists are promoting. They are unabashedly, unashamedly pro everything God hates. They are unabashedly, unashamedly anti everything God loves. Why are we the ones that have to punk out when we have the light? So again, grace is given, but we recognize it and we address it and shy addressed it and and again there's nothing wrong with motivational songs about how how no one can stop you there's nothing wrong with introspection but at the end of the day this movement chh is defined by the gospel so when the shift occurred it it left the movement hemorrhaging not because just any old artist did it but the artist who monopolized the movement did it and by the way, the artist who greatly monetized the movement did it. So for years, I've been talking to brothers in the movement and they felt disappointed, upset, frustrated. Um, Shy is not the only one. He only voiced what many brothers are feeling. As for Hazakim, um, you know, our focus is not diss tracks. Our focus is not beef. We've, we've dealt with it, with it as it comes. And, but that's not our focus. Our focus is the glory of God. Uh, and we'll keep doing what we do until we feel like we want to stop. And, you know, we've seen people come and go. And by God's grace, we're still here. We're, we're still relevant. And uh, when it comes to the integrity of this movement and uh, respect, you know, if, 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 if Vody Bakum, who I don't even agree with in every theological point, but I respect the brother and I love his preaching. If Vody Bakum is disrespected by some dude, you know, and, and called, basically called names and belittled, or if, if uh, Dr. Michael Brown is disrespected, we're going to speak out. And Shylin is a minister of the gospel. Um, again, it wasn't about disagreeing. There are no sacred cows, but it, it was the issue of respect. And we are men. We're men. We're not pushovers. We're not little boys. We're men. And we handled it like men. Um, and again, I would redo some things over. I would omit or change some lyrics. And I have no malice or hatred towards Rusan. I want him to know that if he's hearing this. Brother, I have no hatred towards you. But I would encourage you to be a little less sarcastic, a little less condescending, and a little more respectful in your differing with people. You, you know what I mean? Like, your initial, your initial statement to someone in, in, in disagreement shouldn't be one of condescension or, or uh, sarcasm. It should come from a point of, brother i disagree with you and here's why and by the way in response to this song that we released in response to ruslan there have been a lot of really solid brothers coming to us who have disagreed and have told us why in a very respectful way and there's nothing wrong with that if you disagree with shy's approach there's nothing wrong with that even though i agree with what he was saying 
but you have all the right to disagree, but just do it respectfully. So, I mean, there's no malice. I wish you all the best, bro. I, I wish you best, the best in your career. Just, just show some respect. That's it. That's it. And, and all the men out there who have had to do that, you know what I'm talking about. It has nothing to do with being a believer. It has nothing to do with, with uh, the love of, of, of Messiah being in your heart. It's just, yo, respect, bro. That's it. So, um, I hope, I hope things will, you know, I trust, I don't even hope, I trust and know that the Lord is going to work all things out. And, um, I think for those who don't identify as, as CHH, as, as, as believing artists whose focus is the gospel, don't take advantage of it. Stop monetizing it. Stop using the platform to get money and attention and, and career opportunities. Go ahead and just do what you do. And if believers want to support your music, that's fine. But there needs to be a demarcation and a clear distinction between music that is done for the glory of God and seeks to edify the, the, the body of Messiah and music that doesn't seek God's glory and only uses the platform and the label of Christian hip hop when it's convenient for their own advancement. And, and lastly, I'm gonna say this. In light of some of the feelings of abandonment that even the fans of CHH feel, and there's a lot of complaining about the state of CHH from fans, I see it all the time. Do me a favor. Support the stuff that you like. Su support the artists that you think are doing it right. Don't just complain, support the music that you like. If there are artists who are doing it for the Lord and you think they're doing it the right way, when they come to town, support them. Do you need a bandwagon? Do you need smoke machines and, and jumping masses to support something? No, you create the bandwagon. If you believe brothers are, are, are doing it right, Wrath and Grace, a great young up and coming label. Go support those brothers. When Result or, or some of those brothers come to your town, Omri and those brothers, go support them. Don't wait for the bandwagon to come and all the hype, and then you'll support them. You know what I mean? You're going to drive states away just to be a, in an environment for artists that you, don't even, that you don't even agree with and that you criticize, and you can't drive five minutes away to support brothers who you agree with. You can't even go cop their album. So if we're going to see shift, and if we're going to see diversity, and we're going to see variety in this movement we need support for cats who are doing what you like don't just sit on the sidelines complaining but keep putting money in pockets of cats who you don't agree with and that, that's not hate that's just real like like it's supply and demand it you know cats who are who, who make good business moves you can't get mad at them for making good business moves but so long as you continue to perpetuate it it's not going to stop so chh and when it's done for the glory of god is a beautiful thing that's our focus. Um, I'm not going to go through and defend Hazakim. Really, those of y'all who know what's up and know our resume and know what we've done, know about the Yafanis, know about our labor, know about how we brought, you know, the gospel to the to the Jewish hip hop community and how we brought the roots of the faith and highlighted the roots of the faith and the prophetic nature of Messiah's ministry in, in CHH. Y'all know what's up. And and we're still here. Even in, in the formation of lyrical theology, back to hip apologetics before, you know, lyrical theology was a thing. Y'all know what's up, but we don't need to defend that. Um, but know that we did it because we've been in this movement for a long time and we love this movement and something had to be said. So we'll take the heat. We apologize for, for those to those who were hurt and turned off and say, oh, man, I'm done with CHH. That hurts. You know, or they say Hazakim is supposed to be an example. But this was not drama for drama's sake. We didn't seek this out. We didn't look for trouble. Shy didn't look for trouble. Um, and again, at the end of the day, we pray that um, that the Lord is exalted and that the Lord alone is, is glorified in this movement. And I'd admonished Ruslan to take down his song and Hazakim in turn will take down ours. God bless.